Manchester United players convinced that Eric Ten Hag is going to get sacked. Four players heading for the exit door. And what really happened with Garnacho and Anthony on the weekend with the manager? These are some of the stories we will be discussing on this evening's show. But before we jump into that, please smash a like on today's video. Subscribe to the channel if this is your first time watching. And let's get straight on into it. So let's start the show off with some of these players that are going to be leaving the club this summer. Let's start with Donny van der Beek. This is coming out from Fabrizio Romano. He is reporting that Donny van der Beek will return to Manchester United in June after his loan spell at Eintracht Frankfurt. He says the buy option clause, which is 11 million euros, will not be triggered by Eintracht Frankfurt. Van der Beek is now expected to look for a new club in the summer. I, I honestly don't know what happened to Donny van der Beek. Obviously, he came in when uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was here. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer didn't even seem to want him. He barely played him. Ten Hag comes in. The player was incredible for Ten Hag at Ajax. Ten Hag didn't really seem to play him. Now, the one thing you do have to bear in mind with Donny van der Beek is he did have a lot of injuries at Manchester United. I think maybe it could have gone differently for him if you know he he, he could have stayed fit, and he simply couldn't. Um, it, again, it's another player we've wasted loads of money on. It's a player that we all had such high hopes for. He's somebody that we thought was going to run our midfield. He did so well at Ajax, you know, in that team alongside Frankie De Jong and all the rest of them. But effectively, his career has been his career. His career has been ruined by Manchester United. He's still only 26 years of age, and you know he's gone off to the Bundesliga, and he's really even struggled there. He's only played 344 minutes in the Bundesliga, which is about the equivalent of, I mean, what's that? Just over three games, the equivalent of three matches total, like. It's not good, is it, for him? So, you know, he was at Everton as well. That didn't work out. I don't know what will happen to Donny van der Beek. Maybe he goes back to Ajax. I mean, he, he's going to be a cheap signing for whoever wants him. You know, it's going to be about a £10 million signing. So maybe he goes back to Ajax. Obviously, I wish Donny van der Beek all the best. It's a real shame that it didn't work out. But he's obviously a player we need to move on. And he's somebody who you have to remember as well. His wages at Manchester United are absolutely astronomical. He's paid around £150,000 a week at uh, Manchester United, which is crazy. It's another player who came in, we gave stupid wages, and he didn't perform. So it's a shame, but goodbye. Uh, the next one is Casemiro. This is coming out from a couple of journalists in the UK this morning. And they're saying that Casemiro is now most likely going to leave Manchester United this summer. Obviously, we know that Saudi clubs are circling. If Man United aren't in the Champions League, they're not going to really want to keep Casemiro, are they? 350 grand a week he's being paid. Absolutely ridiculous. He doesn't deserve that. He's been absolutely terrible this season, being completely blunt with you. He's been terrible, awful, rubbish. I can keep going if you want. Not very good at all. Uh, for 350 grand a week, like we're getting absolutely mugged off. That, that's the truth, isn't it? We're getting mugged off. Um, is it his fault? Not really. I mean, if I was Casemiro and Man United offered me 350 grand a week, of course I'm going to take it. He was only paid 150 grand a week at Real Madrid and we were stupid enough to give him an additional 200 grand a week and give him a five-year contract at the age of 30. That's what John Murta used to do. You know, that was the kind of deals that the Glazers and John Murta thought were good. Bring in a marquee signing at the age of 30 for £70 million, give him a five-year contract on 350 grand a week. Now, all we can do is learn from our mistakes and hope and pray that we don't do these things again. Because, you know, £70 million on a 30-year-old is embarrassing. Um, yeah, it's embarrassing. But obviously, let's get him off the books, get him out of the club. Hopefully, we can get some money from a Saudi club. You know, they bought Fabinho, I think, last summer for around €50 million. Euros. If we could get €40 million Euros for Casemiro, I'd be happy. I'd take it. Uh, the next player is Anthony Martial. This is coming out from Fabrizio Romano as well. He is reporting that Martial will leave Manchester United at the end of the season. No doubts on this. It says he will pick his favourite opponent, uh, his favourite option as the next club in the coming months. He's currently focusing on recovering from injury. I I'm going to be honest with you guys. M Martial is an absolute disgrace. He, I don't know what's wrong with him. He, like, he was supposed to be back now. And he's not back. Apparently, we're not going to see him again this season. I, another player, 250 grand a week that we've thrown crazy money at. Somebody who performed maybe for one season eight years ago. We gave him a new contract because we wanted to preserve his value. And he's just mugged us off. So goodbye, Martial. You will not be missed. Uh, and then the final one, which won't really come as too much of a surprise, is on Sofian Amrabat. And the headline this evening is that it is certain that Sofian Amrabat will return to Fiorentina this summer after his loan spell at Manchester United. Another player that came in and I had such high hopes for, somebody I was genuinely thought would completely revolutionise that midfield. It hasn't worked. Eric Ten Hag doesn't seem to want to play him. 
he he must think he's worse than Casemiro, which is saying something. Like, I don't understand how Casemiro is still getting picked when he's absolutely terrible. And you've got Sofia and Amrabat sat on the bench, who I think we paid about a 15 million euros loan fee to Fiorentina for. He's probably only played about five matches, if that. Like, I don't get it. He's obviously not good enough for Manchester United, but I do feel a little bit bad for him in some ways. He's come here, you know, he said it was his dream club, all the rest of it. And he's only played, he's played about the equivalent of 10 matches across all competitions. Like, that's not very much, is it? When you think that we're in what? We've played over 30 games in the Prem. We played six or seven in the Champions League. We've probably played about 40 or 50 games this season. And he's only played maybe a fifth of our games. So, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, we paid, how much did we pay him on the loan fee? We paid them 9 million euros for the loan fee. So it wasn't too bad. But still, when you consider, we probably would have had to pay his wages on top of that. It's another bad signing from Manchester United. So goodbye, Amrabat. Clear the wages. Obviously, we don't have to pay them any money because it was just a loan. Get rid of him and move on. Um, but let me know what you guys think about Casemiro, Martial, um, Donny van der Beek and Sofia and Amrabat. Is there any of those ones, those players who you think we should be keeping? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, let's move over to the story about the manager. This is coming out from Samuel Luckhurst, who I know a lot of the fan base don't like. He's very close to Manchester United. He seems to get his information from the players. So whether we like him or not, I think a lot of the time the, the, the information he gets is from people within the dressing room. Obviously, we don't like that. We don't like that the information's leaked, but it is. So Samuel Luckhurst is reporting this evening that the Manchester United players are delaying making decisions on their futures as they expect Eric Ten Hag to be sacked. I mean, that's just the biggest kick in the face, isn't it? And it's exactly why I don't want Eric Ten Hag to be sacked because ultimately what this story means is that the players know that Eric Ten Hag's going to be sacked and they'll be given a second chance. That's all that st this story says because these players should be quaking in their boots they should be sat there this evening thinking, I'm going to be unemployed next season because Manchester United are going to get rid of me. When really they're sat there thinking, Eric Ten Hag will get sacked, we'll get a second chance, we'll continue earning our stupid wages and we'll underperform again next year. That's what they're sat there thinking realistically, you know? For them to be like waiting on Eric Ten Hag to be sacked, it's like, it's, it's just disgraceful to be honest. And if I was Sir Jim Ratcliffe, if I was um, Sir Dave Brailsford, Dan Ashworth, etc., I'd be going in there into that dressing room and I'd be saying to them, maybe the manager's going to be removed. Who knows? That's none of your business. But if you don't perform between now and the end of the season, if you don't get us, you know, fifth or sixth, if you don't at least get us to the FA Cup final and put in a, a half an effort, we're going to get rid of you. That's what they need to be saying. To, and that's not just aimed at one or two players, you know. That's aimed at McTominay, Maguire, uh, Luke Shaw. I mean, Luke Shaw's injured, not him. Wan-Bissaka, Rashford, Bruno, like all of them. I mean, Bruno's probably the only exception because he does give 150% every single game without fail. But Casemiro, like, all of these people should be on thin ice. All of these people should be looking over their shoulders thinking that I'm going to be removed. But instead, they're all looking over their shoulders, probably talking to each other saying, the manager's going to go, we'll get a second chance and we'll still cash in on our stupid wages that no other club in world football will pay us. No other club in world football is going to pay Anthony Martial 250 grand a week. No other club in world football is going to pay Marcus Rashford 350 grand a week, I don't think, personally. I mean, supposedly PSG wanted him, but that's the only club who seems like they'd be, I don't want to say stupid enough because that's a bit harsh, but the only club who'd be willing, let's say, to give Rashford 350k a week, you know? Like, we pay our players stupid wages and they don't perform. And the fact that these players are just happy to sit there and wait in the assumption that Eric Ten Hag's going to be sacked and they'll get a second chance, I think is an absolute disgrace. And it shows how poor the mentality is at Manchester United at the moment. And it shows how much work Jim Ratcliffe and Sir Dave Brailsford have to do. So let me know what you guys think about that. I think it's a disgrace. And I think that they shouldn't be uh, expecting Eric Ten Hag to be sacked. That's a disgrace. They should be doing everything in their power to keep Eric Ten Hag in that job. They should be doing everything in their power to go and win us football matches. They shouldn't just be downing tools saying, we expect the manager to be sacked. Like, that's a disgrace. You should be sacked. You should go. Uh, it makes me angry, this stuff. And this is why I'm so passionate about Eric Ten Hag staying. Yes, he's not been very good this season. Yes, he makes questionable substitutions. Yes, he keeps picking Rashford and Casemiro, even though they've been terrible, and Bruno sometimes. Um, yes, his substitutions are questionable. Yes, he's stubborn. Yes, he seems to fall out with players. There's so many things that I agree are wrong with him. But the last thing I want is to empower these bunch of overpaid crybabies and for us to go into a new season with a new manager 
and them all to get a second chance. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's exactly what these players know is going to happen. But let me know if you think I'm wrong. If you disagree, uh, that's fine. I think for me personally, Eric Ten Hag's got one year left in his contract. It would send the biggest statement to keep him for one more season. And for Eric Ten Hag to walk into that dressing room and say, you, 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 you're gone. Get out and get rid of them. That would be the biggest message. And it would be the biggest change in Manchester United's recent history. Because the recent history has been a manager comes in, they sack the manager after two years, the players stay, the players get new contracts. Two years later, they stop performing again, the manager gets sacked. It's the same process every two years and it will just continue. So I want the process to break. And um, this story from Samuel Luckhurst just reinforces my point that these players know that they can get away with it. Um, keeping on the topic of players then quickly. So obviously there was this whole thing with Garnacho liking a tweet over the weekend uh, which was effectively slagging off the manager. So the story this evening is a source close to Manchester United has privately described the situation around Garnacho liking social media posts about Eric Ten Hag has apparently already been resolved. The club appreciates that Garnacho quickly unliked the post and considers the matter dealt with. That's good. That's how it should be. Obviously, Jaden Sancho was different. Jaden Sancho made his own public post about him and refused to remove it for three months and then left. It's a completely different situation, as well as him turning up late for training, him not bothering to, to put in any effort in training, you know, being up till four in the morning playing on FIFA. Like, Garnacho was obviously emotional after the game. He wasn't happy that he was brought off. Uh, and that's fair, you know, and that's good. It shows that he cares. It shows that he's passionate. It shows that he, you know, actually wants to, to prove himself, which I like. But um, yeah, that's been resolved. So that's been completely dealt with. And then on the uh, relation to Anthony... Apparently, there were stories going around on Sunday from some people on Twitter saying that apparently Anthony fell out with Ten Hag and that's why he wasn't in the squad. Apparently, that's incorrect. Anthony was injured and Anthony is expected to be back in the squad for the game against uh, Coventry on the weekend. So, yeah, that's positive. Um, let me know your thoughts on everything we've discussed on the show this evening, guys. I'm going to wrap the video up here. If you have enjoyed tonight's show, please do leave a comment, like, subscribe. It doesn't cost you any money. It's completely free get involved in Daily Red Devil. Have a great evening, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 11am for all of your latest Manchester United news and speak soon.